I'm Jenny Waters with Trackside Model Railroading. I'm here with Mike McGinley at his Southwestern Pacific Railroad, which is HO scale. So Mike worked for the SP in Metrolink. Um, we want to talk to him today a bit about his experience. He didn't work for Amtrak, but he worked with Amtrak um, with the other railroads. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about what that was like? Okay, I have, like Jenny said, I did ride as a revenue passenger and occasionally even as a pass rider on, on passenger trains before Amtrak, but I saw the transition. And leading up to the transition, I saw the serious decline in the number of riders and so forth. And so it was, it was fun to watch that transition and through the years to see the traffic build up on the routes. There was a market for rail transportation and it was fun to see the ridership that they built up, particularly on the uh, Sunset Limited, mostly on the Coast Starlight, which did was probably Amtrak's best train of all. Mm -hmm. And the work at the Southern Pacific, we had a sense of pride to want to keep the trains on time. You get overwhelmed by events. Uh, and at a chronically late Amtrak trains became a part of the SP legacy until a man named Robert Krebs was SP's vice president of operations and he negotiated a performance incentive plan with Amtrak that if we got all the trains on time we would get a pretty substantial bit of revenue. Okay. And he made sure we understood that and we did and we got to the point where we were making a fair amount of money uh, it was ranked on the, among the top 15 or so revenue producing customers of the railroad was Amtrak because we were keeping them on time. Then things gradually crumble apart. The priorities of running a railroad to cut costs, reduce crew starts, uh, tolerate slow orders because you can't afford the track maintenance and gradually the Amtrak performance did fade back down. So it's a state of general stress but I don't think any railroad wants to do a bad job of Amtrak. I have worked with Southern Pacific to support Amtrak operations in doing some station rehabilitation work and so forth, and got to know a lot of the Amtrak people. Of course, we would attach our business cars to Amtrak trains and ride across the Southern Pacific. We paid them for the trip, but they'd uh, that was the quick way to get across the railroad, and we would use Amtrak and got to know their, pe their people like that. But the um, relationship was commercial, and we had to be careful we weren't accidentally subsidizing Amtrak. We had auditors making sure that work we did around the station area was built to Amtrak and not mm. to SP operations. I left the Southern Pacific in 1987 and did consulting work and then went to work for Metrolink related to commuter rail operations in Southern California. And the Metrolink operation was entirely by contractor. And Amtrak was our train operations and our rolling stock maintenance contractor. And I mostly worked with our track maintenance and bridge maintenance contractors, but Amtrak was our right hand to get the trains actually run. I became good friends and got to know a lot of the Amtrak people, rode with their crews, went to their meetings, helped explain the changes in our signaling system and our track infrastructure as it, mm. as it came to time to make different improvements and cut over stages. And I thought I had a pretty good relationship with all the Amtrak people to the extent that one day out of the blue, a man named Richard Phelps was the Amtrak head of operations. And he said, hey, Mike, if you ever thought you'd want to make a cab ride, be sure to let me know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay. So Richard Phelps arranged for me to ride as a courtesy inspection trip over Amtrak locomotives from, from uh, basically from Flagstaff through to La Junta, Colorado over Raton Pass, part of the route from Chicago to Washington and then from Washington back to Chicago. Uh, the daylight portions of that trip, and there were a couple of others, uh, including the Cascades from okay. Klamath Falls to Eugene. 
And so that was the highlight of my personal relationship. And I'm still good friends and correspond with Richard Phelps. And so that's kind of my relation with Amtrak and the working uh, respect we had for each other as railroaders. So, Mike, Washington, was that Washington, D.C. or Washington State? No, 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 that was Washington, D.C. Okay. And what it was is quite a story. I rode from Pittsburgh just before dawn over the Alleghenies, which okay. is over the old Baltimore and Ohio, very historic railroad. Sure. Really enjoyed that. Got to Washington, D.C., walked all around the city, just had a fabulous time there. Got on the... Um, the Cardinal, I guess it was, and headed off across Virginia and we pulled into a siding and the dis dispatcher said, you're going to be there until we get the bridge inspected. An oversized truck had knocked a bridge out of alignment and yeah. so we burned up almost all the daylight and I really didn't get to see the New River Gorge or anything. And when that was, it was immediately before the 9-11 mm. because I was headed to Chicago where we had where we had uh, a railway engineering convention. And that was an Amtrak story too, because airlines all shut down. Everybody's from the railroad engineering departments are kind of trapped in Chicago. Uh -huh. And the some of the railroads toward the east, like Norfolk Southern, hired chartered buses and took their people and ran their own bus distribution service and got people home. One of our people at Metro Lake went to O'Hare Airport every day and got turned away and got turned away. And he eventually got on an airplane and he got to Los Angeles ahead of anybody. And one of my friends called Amtrak that morning and got on the next day's train. And he was the second guy to arrive in Los Angeles. It took me a day to figure that out. And again, I called Richard Phelps and he says, well, yeah, we can just show up at Union Station and ask for it. And he gave me the name of the, of the lead service attendant on the Southwest Jeep. Tell him I sent you, and he'll know you're coming. And that's all. It's just verbal. So I got cross-country transportation just verbally. Wow, okay. <laughs> and there were several other Amtrak employees from the Los Angeles area uh, riding in the crew sleeper. And the attitude of the employees was really strange. Some of the employees thought we were management spies and out to see what they were doing wrong. <laughs> and the others say, hey, give us a hand with the baggage, will you? Well, sure. <laughs> so that was a Amtrak experience of, of uh, historic linkage, shall we say. Yeah. So a good question. It wasn't Washington State. I was thinking it was. <laughs> yeah, okay.